So here is the finished Ombuhimu, I believe is how you pronounce it, um, Japanese style carrier meant for high back carries um, without a waistband when baby can sit unassisted and arms out. I really wanted um, a carrier option without a waistband to use for quick ups and downs um, shortly after birth without having the waistband pressure. And so I found some carriers online that have this unique feature where you can carry them on the front safely by having the bottom panel that normally folds up under the bum fold up higher and snap. These aren't weight bearing snaps. It just holds baby in place while you wear baby. See, the legs would come through out through here and it's actually the weight is being held on this strap because their legs come out and through this strap and then because um, their arms aren't out yet. So I just thought I'd show you. This is the inside of the carrier. I've got the straps which has personal fit adjustment so it cinches up and in. Um, chest clip across here. Uh, my hood attachment rings here. I'm just going to release that so it's not wonky. Um, adjustable at the bottom. And if we flip it over to the front, it's got a cinch strap here to bring in the bottom of the carrier for right from little all the way. So this one fits from about newborn size up to 2T. So that's why I needed a lot of cinching. And it's got, oh, I've got my chest buckle still clipped here. There we go. And I've got a hood that scrunches down and expands as much as I need it to. And it detaches through loops by the straps. So this is a really good website here that covers all sorts of things of DIY baby wearing. The types of the character, sorry, types of carriers, um, fabric selection, um, where to buy hardware, general sewing instruction, link to a Facebook group, and about safe baby wearing. So if you scroll down here, there's all like the different types. And this is what I used right here. And from here, the infant sized, which I will make to fit here. Oh, there. So the type of panel to get to cut shoulder straps and your webbing, your buckles, supplies, and all the steps are all covered in there. And then the Facebook group here, DIY baby wearing. And also there's this option too, um, sew toot patterns. I can't vouch for them personally, but um, they also have a huge Facebook group. And if you buy one of their patterns, they have a Facebook group specifically that you can get added into for each of the pattern that has full sew along tutorials and hacks. So this would be an option too for the Ambahimu. There's this one, but they also have full buckle with the waistband, different covers, dolls, etc. So this rectangle here, the 16 by 20, comes from the PDF here. If I go back to the top for the size of the panel. And the changes that I made is I actually, and this includes your seam allowance. So the changes that I made are mine is, was um, 23.75 inches tall instead of 20, which included a 3 eighths of each three eighths of an inch seam allowance for what I drew out. And um, across here at the narrowest part was 13.75 inches, which includes the three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And I just 
curved it at the top instead of having it straight across. And then roughly about halfway through the box, I had it narrow into the lowest, come back out with the edge, and then extended it down 3.75 inches here and curved it along the bottom. So the other change that I did that I will jump ahead in the PDF here down to um, this step here, they have you attach the webbing here at the bottom of the carrier going straight out. But because mine is angled, I actually attached my webbing carrying on the curve line as that. So that's just something I'm going to note here because I don't think I mention it later on when I'm actually making it. So normally it gets attached there. I attached mine on an angle with my carrier. All right, so I have sewn together the straps and I have done my padding. So for the padding, you can do foam, you can do, um, I've seen yoga mats, um, fleece. I was gonna do a yoga mat from Dollarama because I didn't wanna buy the foam, but they didn't have any. So I went with fleece and the fleece I had to use was just a regular micro fleece Walmart blanket. So I ended up doing a couple extra layers. So there's eight layers total and uncompressed. It's about three quarters of an inch to an inch thick. And I put it on my shoulder and I'm happy with that. And instead of basting down the edges, which was just too finicky, I just opted to baste right down the middle of both the straps. I started in the middle and basted all the way to here and then started back in the middle and basted there so all the layers didn't shift and I had my pressure foot setting um, to zero, um, but if you had a walking foot, that would be a time to use it as well, and the longest stitch length that I had, and my machine, which is a Genomi HD 2000, um, went through it beautifully. So now I'm gonna, like a pillowcase, put these inside the straps. All right, so the padding is now inside. And I'm pretty happy with that. It wasn't as difficult as I thought it was going to be. My hands are, if I could squeeze them in just enough to get them through. So now I'm going to start planning out all the webbing for the straps. All right, so all the webbing and the buckles are on. So I also did a row of stitching on the edges just to help keep the fleece in place so it didn't bunch up. You could also do one right down the middle, but I felt it was fine just on the edges. And I also changed it because I couldn't get a sternum um, clasp here, oh, sorry, a sternum slider that had proper weight testing on it. So instead, I lengthened the straps here, the measurements from the pattern, and looped it around, and then did an Xbox over here to secure it and then put that onto the strap before doing the second top stitching down of the strap here. So all of my X boxes are done, the lines to secure, and yet the worst part is sewing these lines and this line in without breaking a needle and getting it through your machine. So that's all done and I've got the, I'm doing the personal fit adjusters. So I've got those basted on the top and so the next step is to add these to the body along with the other webbing and home stretch almost. All right so I have attached my straps and then sewn the rectangle template that'll be the Xbox and then I have sewed on my padding. So for my straps I did eight layers of micro fleece but I only did uh, was it four for the leg padding here and I also basted it down the middle prior to attaching to keep all the layers together and then I did my bottom straps here and sewed my template that I'll do for the Xbox so now the next step is to attach well actually I'm going to reinforce here 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 and here for the snaps that I'll talk about later and then I will add 
the right side of the baby carrier and stitch all the way around. All right, so I have now, I did my snap reinforcements on this side and because it was too close to the webbing and the fleece, um, I did it on the other layer of fabric for the top. And I have stitched it all together. As you can see, there's probably like a faint blue line here. When I cut out my pattern pieces, I drew on my stitching line. So I didn't have to worry about the seam allowance. I could just follow along with my stitching line. So I sewed all from here down to here, stopped here, left an opening here, stitched here, stopped, stitched up here, stopped, and stitched here. So anything that there is something sticking out, there's a hole there, and then there's a hole to turn it here. So now I am going to turn it all right sides facing out, and then we will do some top stitching and the Xbox reinforcements. So I've decided to add a detachable hood to my carrier. So these are going to be the loops that get put on the top where the straps are that the hood will snap through and then can be removed. So I cut a one inch tall piece by six inches wide, folded it in half and pressed, and then folded the outer edges in to meet the middle and pressed. So it's all folded up to be a quarter inch. And then I stitched along the edge and then snipped it in half. So each of these pieces are three inches long to attach to the carrier. All right, so everything is top stitch. I did my X boxes on the bottom webbings and up on the straps and added my drawstring loops in there. And I top stitched around the leg padding there. So now I am going to make the hood and then I will add the snaps and I will show it to you all done. All right, for so the hood, I went with a 12 inch by 12 inch square and sewed these edges right sides together and turned it right sides facing out. And then I folded along the top edge and stitched along it. Now I'm gonna give it a press and I'm gonna sew two channels one on each side that a drawstring will go through so that this can cinch up and down and then I will close along the top here. So I did the channels and then I sewed some straps and fed them through and then flush at the bottom and I pinned them there so they didn't fall out and then I made some bias binding just to run along the bottom to close that edge and secure the bottom of the drawstrings and then extended them off and that's what loops through the attachment loops and I added snaps so here you can see it unsnapped it feeds through the hood loop so it can be removed and then folds over and just snaps down and then this hood can be scrunched down low or all the way up I'm going to finish off the edges once I play around with wearing it and figuring out where if these need to be shortened and where they're going to attach to. And I will probably put a D ring through this webbing here, which goes through the personal fit adjuster. So I would just unthread this, put a D ring here. And then when I figure out the proper position that I like it, I'll add another row of stitching just to hold that D ring into place. The last thing that I did was add a panel cincher to the front so that it really cinches it down for the legs from going knee to knee, right from little all the way up to the full width. So what I did was, this is one inch and I used one inch D-rings um, just because that's what I had in the stash and I wanted this on the outside of the carrier so I didn't use the black webbing or the slide adjusters like on the straps. And so this is one inch and I think what I did was I cut it four inches and then folded it in half and folded it in again. So it's four layers here. So it's pretty thick. I probably didn't need to do that. I probably could have just folded it in half and stitched it and then turned the tube right side out. But I didn't feel like pulling this long tube <laughs> inside out. So what I did was I have a small one here that'll focus um, that attaches. I'm just going to unthread this. 
the two D rings through here and then I did an X box stitch to secure that. And then over here is just the single length and I did an X box stitch over here to secure it on that end. And then I just feed it through here, through both rings and then back through just the one ring and then it can be cinched there. Um, you could also do this on the inside of the carrier too, but I was concerned that the buckle might rub against baby and not be comfortable. So that's why I put mine on the outside. And now what I'm going to do is probably talk about some things that I would have done differently now that I went through the whole process of sewing this. So first thing that I would have done different is I am about five foot nine and I actually don't need the personal fit adjusters on these straps. So this here pulls up and it cinches in the strap here so it allows for a more custom fit. For me, I only need them cinched just barely, um, even not at all, depends on if it's a front or a back carry. Uh, so I would have actually extended my padding more here because this kind of hits on my shoulder. I kind of hit partial on the padding, partially unpadded, depended on the carry. So I would have changed that. Um, these I'll end up shortening. Um, they're just a lot longer than needed, but I would actually end up lengthening this strap down here because I find that is just, I would like a little bit more to hang on to to be able to pull. Um, the other thing I would change is because I didn't have the strap sliders uh, with the proper weight bearing, I did this thing around, which ends up being that I had two X boxes side to side, one with the overlap for the clip and one overlap for where this goes around. I actually would have um, done it so that it was three layers going through for the X box. So then it can shrink up even more because it's just fine for me but it would be nice if I could be able to shrink up the chest a little bit more but this is something I can always unpick because of how it's constructed and then re-thread a shorter one through overlap it and re-stitch it on if I need to down the road so I don't have to take apart my whole carrier to make that change um what else was there um oh my snaps they're not meant to be weight bearing they're just meant to be able to uh, keep baby in until they can sit up on their own in the front carry and just help keep them more secure. So my snaps actually are visible on the front. Um, so if that's something that bothers you, then you can... I didn't want to place the snaps until after I had finished so I could fully be confident in where I wanted to place them. But if um, so that meant that the snaps are visible on the outside of the carrier, which doesn't bother me, but if it bothers you, you can install them on the inside layer, which is the layer that we did all of our stitching of the padding and the straps to. Um, what else? I, another thing that I could have done is the cinching. I could have attached that to the outer layer before assembling the whole thing but again I wasn't too sure what I was going to do for cinching I was going back and forth on inside or outside and so because of that and in order to get it to cinch as much as I wanted it to cinch I needed to have my xbox placement on the leg padding which made for a bulky sew and then you can see it on the inside so it's got squishy squishy padding and then a hard xbox so um, alternatively, I could have just done it on the outside and then this, it would have just had Xboxes through the outside and it wouldn't have gone all the way through the padding. Um, I may have done another one more layer of the fleece on the padding, but um, it's probably fine. I'm happy with the amount of padding I did in the straps. They're not overly thick 
and bulky. So again, I did eight layers of the micro fleece for that, and I did four layers of micro fleece for the leg padding.